This is my long-awaited uh, tutorial video about audio editing. I am not a professional audio editor, and I don't even know if I'm a good audio editor, but I do like things edited in a very particular way, so I want to kind of go through that and talk a little bit about things. What you're looking at here is audio that was recorded for an episode of The Projection Booth was this one about a film called The Changeling. And there are three people who are speaking on this, and you can kind of tell that there are three people. There's one person over here on this channel. This is my voice, so it's going to get a little confusing when you're hearing my voice. But fortunately, right now, I sound very different uh, in this recording than I do on this recording, the one that I'm, I'm looking at now. And there are two other people. They recorded on the other audio track. One person you can see here, and the other person is here. Now, is there a big problem that their waveforms look different? No, not really. That all gets kind of worked out in the wash. You see some little noises here and there. Things like this little blip here and this other blip here. Uh, this one, I imagine, is kind of a transition. This is probably a mistake or a laugh. Uh, probably me coughing or clicking my tongue. I hate the sound of tongue clicking when people go or so yeah that stuff usually gets left out. These little blips over here uh, I imagine I know what they are but I mm, could just go through and cut them right out but I'm going to wait and I'll do that as I'm editing the audio. So this one is already cleaned up a little bit as far as I think that it ends right around the time that I end this recording and I've already set it to begin when I've done this. The biggest thing here is just going to be what I call cuts only. There's going to be a lot of just going through and tightening things up. You can already tighten things up somewhat by going into this effect and doing truncate silence. That takes any and all like longer pauses and shrinks them up, but that also looks for a uh, a level of your silence so if there are things that are a little too loud they are not considered silence imagine that loud noises are not considered silence so those will be ignored and that's usually the stuff that i'm going to be cleaning up by hand so oh shoot now it's truncating the silence i think i've already done this once so i imagine you just take a look down here at this number yeah and it didn't really jump at all okay Luckily, that didn't take us too far away from this. All right, let's go ahead. One of the th first things that I do is split the stereo track to mono, so that way I don't actually have to listen to this with both uh, headsets, head cans on my head. I have made a promise to myself to not clean up this audio on this tutorial at all, so sorry for the mistakes. So here we go. Let's listen to some audio. Welcome to the Projection Booth. I'm your host, Mike White. Joining me is Mr. Axel Cohagen. A proud... So here's a little bit where Axel is going through and breathing, getting ready to talk. Whatever. I can leave it in there or not. Uh, I took it out. I leave breaths in. I used to be a very big stickler about that, but it sounds very unnatural. There's also this bit of a pause here. Let's see. Aficionado. Also with me. Yeah, I don't really need that pause. It uh, Generally, I don't leave that much space between how uh, quickly we talk. So let's go here. Aficionado. Also with me this week is... Pause there. After you do this enough, you just get to look at things by time and say, okay, yeah, that looks like about enough time. So that looks like about enough time. Andrew Jupin. Hello there. And then there's this little bit of... Yeah, that doesn't... That's just junk. So let's go ahead. I'm highlighting everything. You see these little things? This is probably me starting to breathe. I'm just... Boop. This just goes through in silences. Silences don't sound bad unless there's a lot of ambient noise. Um, and then silence just sounds bizarre when things are hissing and then all of a sudden goes silent. And then you think something is wrong. So. Hello there. 
This week we are discussing the 1980 spook fest, The Changeling. The film stars George C. Scott as a pianist and composer who loses his wife and daughter in a terrible traffic accident. A few months later, see, I'm okay with these breaths in here. A few months later, he begins a new job and settles into an old house that's filled with secrets. The film was written by Diana Maddox and William Gray and was directed by Peter Madak, who we'll hear from later on in the show. Just a word of warning, we'll be going into some spoilers on this episode, so if you haven't seen the change in... See, if you have See, there I screw up. So let's try to make that sound like I don't screw up. Haven't seen the change in... See, if you've seen the change in... Haven't seen the change in... See, if you haven't seen the... So let's go in here and see where I say haven't. If you haven't seen... If you haven't seen... Haven't. Haven't seen... And then where's the other good haven't? You can kind of tell because this almost looks the same as far as the shape of this and the shape of this. Haven't seen... Haven't. Haven't seen... So I'm just going to cut and then go like this. So, so if you haven't seen the... Ch and you can't really tell that there's a break. So, so if you haven't seen The Changeling yet, after 36 years, then go ahead, turn off the podcast, watch the movie, and come back. We'll still be here. Axel, when was the first time you saw The Changeling, and what did you think? See, big pause here. As Axel's getting his thoughts together. Usually, when people are thinking, or when people are getting ready to speak... Uh, usually the first couple words out of the mouth is garbage. So let's see if Axel uh, has good things to say right off the bat. I first saw The Changeling oh, yeah. in, it was, I think, 1995. See, that's good, because normally I do not. Normally I bullshit a few words before I actually say what I want to say. A friend of mine and I had a 20-movie marathon where we watched 20 movies we hadn't seen before in two and a half days. And we picked The Changeling to be our anchor movie because we had seen the big, I think it was the Warner Brothers clamshell case oh, with the here. chair on it. And I always assumed it had to be the scariest thing ever. We watched it last, and I think we both enjoyed it, but had our expectations yeah. built up too high. See, I made a noise. I don't want that because it really doesn't add anything to the conversation. and It just distracts from what Axel is saying. But had our expectations built up too highly. And then as I got older... And you don't really need that and then. And is just kind of a weird transitory word most of the time. I mean, you can leave it or not. I'm just not going to. I'm just going to go... Built up too highly. Then as I got older and rewatched it, and I think... Under so it makes as much sense rather to say and then. Then as I got older and rewatched it, and I think... Yeah understood a little bit more about loss and grief than I did as a junior in high school. I, I appreciated you, it on a whole different level. Oh, see, somehow, somewhere I screwed up, and I deleted my stuff. So you see how my audio is here, and we've got this big pause. That happens more than I would like to say. So I could probably go back through, and I could, you know, delete a bunch of stuff, you know, Control-Z, a bunch of stuff. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of fake this here. So I'm going to copy out a big block of silence. I'm going to paste it right there. Still not enough. Let's paste it again. All right, so now if I played this, it would sound normal. Appreciated it on a whole different level. How about you, Andrew? So I can leave me saying, how about you, Andrew, in here, or I'll see how Andrew sounds. It could just sound naturally like he's picking up from Axel's conversation. Um, I first saw this. So the um has got to go. Ums are bad news. And I think it's going to sound okay if he just goes, I first saw it so without me prompting him. The less of me in a podcast, the better. Whole different level. I first saw this in, See, I guess good. it was the early 2000s. It was a total accidental find at the blockbuster in where this is the true story i was leaning down to pick up a vhs tape of some leprechaun sequel and as i put it in my hand i just thought you don't want to do this and i put it back and then immediately to the right of this leprechaun sequel was the changeling and funny enough just like axel i saw the wheelchair you know and then the the shadow of the kid you know in the wheelchair on the wall and was like oh this might be a dead kid movie this sounds eerie uh and and picked it up and went went home and watched it immediately 
Yeah, that video box was something I remember from my days of cleaning the shelves at Blockbuster. And was one of those that, I guess it was pretty close to Black Roses. It was definitely the scariest area of the video store to have Black Roses with that awesome 3D cover. And then having this one with that creepy freaking wheelchair on the, on the front of it. But for some reason, it just took me a long time to finally get around to it. And it really, Andrew, I have you to thank for it because this had been on my radar for a long time, but you can kept dropping it on We Hate Movies and saying, you you want a good dead kid movie, watch The Changeling. And finally I'm like, Let's okay. See, yeah. kind of stuttered a little bit here. Welcome. Ah, shit. How about you, Andrew? Ah. All right. So I just, I hit back instead of... Uh... But for some reason, it just took me a long time to finally get around to it. And it really, Andrew, I have you to thank for it, because this had been on my radar for a long time, but you kept dropping it on We Hate Movies and saying, you you want a good dead kid movie, watch The Changeling. Kid movie, watch The Changeling. And finally, I'm like, okay, yeah, I will watch The Changeling. And it is amazing. I was really blown away by it. There's some noise here. And it is amazing. I was you want to hear what the noise sounds like you can do this you can go mute and then go <laughs> yeah but you just know it's noise you don't hear anybody saying anything and plus it'd be rude if, if somebody started speaking right here that'd be pretty rude because i'm talking so there we go i'm glad so that pause is okay but i'm just going to tighten it up a little bit here so it goes like this blown away by it I'm glad that I could uh, help get you into the movie. I've actually spread the word about this movie to tons of people ever since I saw it. And, uh, you know, yeah, now that I'm on like a... Now, usually I will cut an anda or an anda in this case. And... Uh, but it flows pretty well. But, and, uh, you know, yeah, now that I'm on like a... a plat now, this is a weird one. A, a, a so that's a Skype mistake right there. That is not Andrew fucking up. This is a nice Skype pause. Hey, hey, hey. So we can try to fake this out and make it sound okay. I'm cutting into the middle of this right here. So let's see if there's a skip. A a plat. A a. Pl see now, then I realize that he actually says a a. So let me just do this. I'm like a platform that. Unlike a platform that's widely like available platform. to people, I will keep hammering home the message of seeing the changeling. Well, I gotta... And then there's me breathing. You can hear all the noises of my own house. We've got phone ringing, we've got dogs whining. So, always a lot of fun. Well, I gotta say, it starts off um, incredibly with this very, you know, idyllic fam. You know, you know, I, you know, idyllic. How about idyllic? So okay, that was good. Very idyllic family portrait of George C. Scott and his wife and daughter. And yes, they're having some car trouble out in the uh, the tundra of Canada, it looks like. Or I think it's supposed to be the Pacific Northwest, but definitely a Canadian film. And we've got them, you know, even though the car is broken down, we're still having a good time. And we're pushing the car and everything. And he goes to make a phone call to get some help. And uh, the wife and... And, uh... Uh, but I usually say and uh, so it kind of cuts weird sometimes let's see and the wife and so here I'm just saying and so that's close enough to and that people can accept that and the wife and daughter are outside and they're Still playing in the snow and, and everything uh, on one of these uh, very remote uh, tele see there's another uh Moat telephone booths, which was great that these things existed, until they get slammed by a car and run over by this huge semi. And that scene, it's it is more. See, I say it's it's scene. It's it is more. Where do I start to say it? It's right there. 
Let's see this. That scene, it is more horrific to me than any other car crash scene I can think of in recent memory, except for what was the name of that movie where the, the woman was down in the uh, the cave for the long time? Does anybody remember which one I'm talking about? Let's see. Now, this oh. is bullshit right here as I'm like kind of fucking up with this title. And I can't even remember if the descent actually begins with a car crash or not. So I might be cutting this whole thing. Yes, it was more horrific than the car. Okay, so here they tell me the descent. Oh, the descent? Yes. So now rather than me sounding like an idiot and asking for help, I'm just going to make myself... Yes, it was more horrific. So I go, it is more horrific. More horrific. More horrific. What was the name of that movie where... Yeah, let's cut me not remembering something. Any other car crash scene I can think of in recent memory, except for, what was the name of that movie where the... the... So now, here's me asking. Except for... what? Except for... What was the name... Pardon me while I cough. Alright, so now... I have to make a decision. Am I going to blank this and then try to make it work here? So let's see. More horrific than the car. Than the. Than. Than the car. Than. Than the. Than a recent memory, except for more. See, except for. So it still doesn't make any sense. More than the car crash. In except for. Then the car crash. How about the car crash? Car crash. The car crash. And the car. And the car. Let's get closer to the the. The car. The car crash. All right, now let's see. Sometimes you've cut into a middle of a, a word or something, and it sounds funny. So let's hear how this sounds. Come on, Mike. There we go. Select. Delete. Except for the car crash and the descent to me. Or wait, it might have been uh, Inside that I'm thinking of. Inside's the one with the uh, pregnant woman and they're trying to cut the baby out of her? Right. I think there's a car crash right at the beginning of that one. Yeah, oh, there yes. Is. Yeah, you're totally right. Yep. Yeah. I know. Most, most of the time is... So, I'll say most of the time. Most of the time. Right. So, because this is all bullshit. This is all just me being an idiot. Totally right. Yep. Most of the time is spent trying to cut the baby out of, of, of that poor woman. But the car crash is what I remember. Uh, usually I will cut my own laugh out. I think maybe that makes me sound like I have a drier wit. But uh, I'm okay leaving that laugh in there because I'm laughing at myself. Yeah, well, somehow you forgot some of the most horrific stuff I've ever <laughs> seen in a horror movie. But that car crash, look out. Ooh, that look sticks out. with you. Okay, yeah, so that was just like, <laughs> oh, whatever. And I like how we go from... So let me go back to this. I'm just going to take this. Because we're digressing. Let's get back to the meat of it. Yeah, out of, of, <laughs> of that. So all this stuff goes. Right, yep. So, right here, just go right back to the discussion. Totally right, yep. I like how we go. Usually, I don't leave people telling me that I'm right. I just, you know, I don't need to be praised. I don't need that again, conversational kind of stuff. So, but it, I'm okay here because this is a nice transition. Because if I don't have this, then I've just got me and me. And let's give Andrew a voice here and go through and clean up. See that little blip there? Let's clean that up. Might not be a whole lot, but I figure any any cleaning that can be done is going to help the recording. At the beginning of that one. Yeah, oh, there yes. Is. Yeah, you're totally right. Yep. I like how... And usually I try to cut out when people are talking over each other. Yeah, oh, there yes. is. You, you can hear both. Yeah, oh, there yes. is. Alex and... Axel and Andrew. Yeah, oh, they're yes. In. But it's okay. They're not really. I can make out both voices. So 
I like how we go from this to, yeah, the, you know, Axel, you brought up the whole idea of grief. And this movie so is about grief. And it feels like a very adult horror film. So I'm amazed that, you know, being, you know, let's get rid of that fucking, you know. Being a, a younger person and renting this, like, I can see where you would just be like, yeah, whatever. Because this is so much more like a, a, a movie for somebody who's experienced loss. And by that time in your life, I don't know if you yeah, haven't experienced that loss. much, but definitely not as much as George C. Yeah. Scott has in this film. Okay. All right. That's, I'm almost to five minutes here. How long has this taken me? A little bit longer than five minutes to go through here. I usually also don't talk and edit at the same time. I usually will have a movie going on while I'm doing this because I can kind of half pay attention to it because I've been doing this now for almost five years. But it's also still really good to pay attention and to try to look at all those little things and then this is not talking about putting in clips. I tend to like to put in a lot of clips. With a movie like this, I probably won't be putting in a whole lot of stuff. Maybe, like, I see, like, there's a psychic scene later on that we talk about. I'll probably put that in. And when that happens... Yeah, I'll just do this really quickly. When that happens, what happens here is I do Control n I open up a new thing. And then I usually just record right here. Do, do, do. Excuse me, Katie. See, I also have dogs crawling on me. I have a dog laying on my lap. I have a dog who's trying to crawl onto the rest of my lap that isn't taken up by my laptop. And I've got a dog who's also on the couch and snoring. The guy who you could probably hear earlier in this recording. But, uh, yeah, he, he moved so that's good I don't think I have the movie in here no I don't have the movie in here so let me see where the movie's at and yeah, this is how the sausage is made folks I know it's really super sexy super sexy just like my voice right now but uh, yeah it's uh, it's something I don't know if sexy is a word, really. Change. Where the hell's the changeling? Could be under the. Yeah. I remember Leon talking about how uh, most online tutorials he sees are bullshit. And uh, I'm just adding to the large pile of bullshit that's out there. Alright guys, I don't need to search for the changeling anymore. I've found it. So let's find that clip. Where is that? Tess, I will let you out in a few minutes. Just hang on. Alright, wait. Oh, psychic research. We're getting closer. There's the woman. So, once I, I would get closer to where the clip is, will you is communicate that I want. with us? Will you come through? This isn't as exciting as on in the clip when things really get going like this. So let me go back a little bit. And you we could just record the whole thing and then edit it later. Will you talk to us? Will you communicate with us? Will you come really through see this to us? Moving at all. Actually, you're seeing my voice on here better than the other thing. So Will I think that it's set up incorrectly. To us? Yeah, this is me talking. We are here to help you. What That's is your fair. name? Will you speak to us? Yes. What is your name? I barely see this. Are you the child, Cora? Are you the child killed by the cold heart? No. What is your name?
Joseph. Did you die in this house, Joseph? How did you die? Is there someone here you wish to communicate with? comes to stuff like this where you've got all this uh, long pauses there's probably music here probably just barely off nice and low so you can't really cut that out too well so you have to leave some of that in there but there is a way where you can kind of you know massage that so you cut out some of these pauses but then it might sound a little too rat-a-tat-tat when you're going you know question answer question answer so it's almost better to leave some of those pauses in but anyway if you just want to how did you die how did you die you know you can just go back over here to our original stuff and the one thing you have to remember is i'll just go back in and make it a stereo track whoops there you go now you got that now you go back to the mono but the one thing also to remember is the importance of fade in and fade out, because this sounds really... It's film. How oh, did you die? So it's always nice to just do a little intro. Fade in. <laughs> and then at the end, fade out. Film. How oh, did you die? That's completely the wrong place to put that quote, so out it goes. And I'm going to stop this recording because I imagine it is getting very long.